Now, hands up, who doesn't enjoy a massive tall building? I mean, there's something deeply satisfying about an enormous edifice now, isn't there? Then there are so many lovely big shiny buildings all over the world, and they all have viewing platforms too. <laughs> I know, it's wild. So hang on, because we're about to give you a whole bunch of vertigo as we climb the impossible heights, but be warned, you're about to get very, very dizzy to the top of the 20 tallest buildings in the world. Number 20. The Burj Khalifa Back along, there was often a kerfuffle about which building was the world's tallest. This seemed to be something that many countries aspired to be achieving within their borders. And in recent times, however, it would appear that, like all the other biggest and shiniest things, the UAE has this area covered as well. The Burj Khalifa is a huge towering structure which has taken the title of world's tallest structure. There are some crazy numbers involved in the existence of the Burj Khalifa. This building is a staggering 2,716 feet and 6 inches tall, so it's no wonder that it's known as a vertical city. The structure took a total of 12,000 people from across the globe. It's clad with 26,000 hand-cut glass panels, and of course, that takes a heck of a lot of cleaning. Three months to complete, in fact. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Here we are, most definitely, looking at one of the very realist tall buildings of the world. There's absolutely no way at all that it could be difficult to get planning permission to build this structure. I mean, it would definitely meet all of the codes, I'm sure. In fact, this building looks so real that I can't even understand why it doesn't have a name and why the city upon which it's based isn't boasting all about their incredible cloud-busting erection. But what do you think? Where is this building? And why don't we all know about it already? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Merdeka 118. Merdeka 118 is also sometimes called, rather unsurprisingly, PNB 118. It's an ambitious skyscraper project that's located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and this looming tower is named after the country's Independence Day of Merdeka. It's seen as a symbol of Malaysia's progress and long-term vision for the future. Standing at over 2,000 feet, it's set to be one of the tallest buildings in the world, and we all know that having a really tall building is the height of modernity. The tower's design is a fusion of traditional Malaysian architecture and contemporary aesthetics, incorporating green spaces and all of those important and frightfully fashionable sustainable features. It's going to serve as a mixed-use development with luxury residences, you know, the pinnacle of sustainability, commercial spaces like a hotel, and observation decks that offer far-reaching views of the city. Merdeka 118 aims to be more than just a towering structure. It represents a notion towards economic growth and tourism for Malaysia. The project is being cited to boost the local economy create jobs, and attract visitors from all around the world. Which is, frankly, what they always promise will happen when some big shot wants to do a massive project. So, who knows? Number 18. The Shanghai Tower The Shanghai Tower is located in the heart of Shanghai's financial district. This massive skyscraper stands at a rather tall height of over 2,000 feet, which makes it, you guessed it, one of the tallest buildings in the whole of the wide world. It's yet another example of how a city is trying to impress upon the world just how very important that it is. Designed by the architectural firm Gensler, the Shanghai Tower has an unusual twisting shape that not only looks kind of cool, but also serves a functional purpose. The tower's spiral design allegedly allows for greater wind resistance, energy efficiency, and also offers all of those important panoramic views of the city from its observatory decks. All of the essentials, then. Anyways, they claim that the building includes numerous eco-friendly features, like wind turbines, rainwater collection systems, and energy-efficient glass, 
The building has achieved several green building certifications, thus emphasizing its environmentally responsible design and construction. Inside, the tower houses a mixture of commercial, office, and retail spaces, as well as a luxury hotel, because nothing is more sustainable than a luxury hotel. It's also become a symbol of Shanghai's economic and cultural vitality, attracting businesses, tourists, and locals alike. Which is the entire point of such an enterprise, so that's lucky then. Number 17. The Clock Towers Here we are in Saudi Arabia at the Clock Towers, a building that was once known as Abraj al Bayt. It's part of the King Abdulaziz Endowment Project, in which large erections throughout the country are supposed to make up for the lack of endowment elsewhere. Anyways, the clock towers are actually a very tall building indeed, measuring 1,972 feet tall. It contains a whole bunch of stuff within its sizable structure, from a big five-story shopping mall to a mosque, and from a five-star hotel to a parking garage. This place has a little bit of everything. Now, as the name would imply, the building is topped with a four-faced clock that is so big that it can be seen from 16 miles away, and that does indeed make it the highest clock in the entire world. What thrilling stuff. Number 16. The Ping An International Finance Center The Ping An International Finance Center is often referred to as Ping An IFC, presumably to make it less of a mouthful. But to be honest, it still doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, so to speak. The tallest office building in the world and the fourth tallest building. It's a big fat skyscraper that's located in Shenzhen, China. This building measures 1,965 feet, which is what places it on this list of mega tall structures. Surprise, surprise. It was completed back in 2017 and has been highly lauded by those who bang on about such things as a modern architectural marvel. Designed by the firm Cone Peterson Fox Associates, the Ping An IFC boasts a distinctive sleek design that's characterized by its tapering form and a glass facade, housing a mixture of office spaces, luxury hotels, and of course, retail areas, accommodating, so they say, a wide range of businesses and visitors. Perched at the top is the observation deck, offering panoramic views of the city and the Pearl River Delta. And guess what? That's right, this building is also apparently totally dedicated to ecological stuff. Well, you do have to say these things these days, or nobody's going to let you build anything at all. In some countries, there really are strict guidelines that have to be followed to meet energy-efficient standards, but how deeply these are actually at the core of the buildings themselves is a matter of opinion. The building is said to have incorporated all manner of energy-efficient systems, which includes advanced insulation and cutting-edge HVAC technology, all of which has given it a bunch of fanfare and recognition as a green and eco-friendly structure. Number 15. The Lati World Tower The Lati World Tower is a big tall piece of architecture that sits in the skyline of Seoul, South Korea. Standing at 1,823 feet, it's not only the tallest building in South Korea, but also one of the tallest in the entire world. This tower was completed in 2017 and is seen as a symbol of Seoul's progressive spirit and its ambition to become a global city. Again, the structure was designed by Cohn Peterson Fox Associates. These guys are responsible for rather a lot of these tall buildings around the world, and some may say that they are perhaps feeling a little inferior in other areas. Well, with all the massive phallic objects that they're compelled to place in all the major cities around the globe. But that would be other people saying that, and I would definitely never try to suggest anything of the sort. They say that the tower's design is a bit of a blending of contemporary aesthetic and traditional Korean elements, drawing inspirations from the elegant curves of Korean porcelain and calligraphy. It offers a view of Seoul from its observation deck, which provides customers with an unparalleled panoramic experience of the city. And this is what all visitors want from any destination, really, a high-up experience. The tower serves as a multifunctional complex, housing a luxury hotel, well, duh, and high-end residencies, office spaces, and a shopping mall. And why not put a community center, a library, and a school in these places? I mean, really, if your whole aim is to promote your future forward society, why not put all the stuff that society actually needs in these symbolic structures? Oh, because it's really all about the money after all, I see. <laughs> Silly me. 
They do also love to boast how it has loads of cutting-edge sustainability features, such as efficient energy management systems and state-of-the-art water conservation techniques. But then again, they all say that, now don't they? Number 14. One World Trade Center One World Trade Center, or the Freedom Tower, is a symbol of resilience, strength, and rebirth in the heart of Lower Manhattan, New York City. The project was completed in 2013 when it replaced the original twin towers of the World Trade Center that were destroyed during the attacks of September 11th. The building was designed by architect David Childs, even its height is symbolic for American reasons, standing at 1,776 feet tall, which is to commemorate the year that the American Declaration of Independence came to be. This is the sort of thing that America especially enjoys. You know, finding Easter eggs in movies, shows, and advertisements. Its design is a bit of a combo of modern aesthetics and security, featuring a glass facade and a spire that emits a beacon of light which is visible from many miles away. The tower is a hub of commerce and culture, containing a variety of businesses, government offices, and observation decks. The 9-11 memorial, with its reflective pools and names of victims inscribed, occupies the ground level, creating a space for remembrance. And naturally, One World Trade Center also has a bunch of sustainable and energy-efficient features that makes it eco-friendly. Its commitment to environmental responsibility reflects New York City's dedication to a more sustainable future and how very fashionable of it. But beyond all that architectural environmental jazz, One World Trade Center is a powerful symbol of hope, resilience, and unity. Number 13. Guangzhou CTF Finance Center well, this is just a thrill a minute now, isn't it? Next up, we have the Guangzhou CTF Finance Center in Guangzhou, China. This skyscraper was completed in 2016, standing at a height of 1,739 feet, which, as I'm sure that you can now tell, means it's one of the tallest buildings in the whole world. Designed by our old pals at the Cone Peterson Fox Associates, this building has a modern and minimalist design. Its glass-clad exterior reflects the surrounding environment, creating a particular sort of visual effect, especially when illuminated at night. The building is meant to help establish the city on a global scale and show off its status as a major economic hub. Well, that is the idea of shiny big buildings in any case, but what do you think? Does a lot of tall glass office buildings make you think of a place as important or interesting? Or is that earned another way? New York City has a famous skyline, but is that really what people love about this particular place? Let's get stuck in this argument in the comments section down below now, shall we? Back to the boring old tower block, though, and this is yet another mixed-use development. Housing offices, a luxury hotel, high-end retail spaces, but specifically mixed use for the big budget type of things that we've seen before. Its observation deck offers views of the Pearl River and the city below, and yet again, these architect types have been sure to include all of the latest sustainability jargon in all of their materials about the structure. So that's a relief then. I mean, where would we be if a boring old office building in China forgot to commit to environmental responsibility? Number 12. The Tianjin CTF Finance Center I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely thrilled that we have another CTF Finance Center so soon after the last one. I mean, finance centers just have to be my most favorite sorts of buildings in the whole wide world. I even have the I Spy Spotter's Book of Financial Structures to prove my dedication to the cause. This is the Tianjin CTF Finance Center, which was completed in 2019, standing at a height of 1,739 feet, and it's one of the tallest in the city. This time around, we're looking at a building that was designed by a different architect, Praise B, and that's the architectural firm of Skidmore, Owings & Merrill. I know you're as thrilled as I am about all of this. But like all of the other things that we've seen so far today, it all looks kind of similar. This finance center has a sleek and futuristic design with a modern aesthetic. The building's facade combines vertical lines and gentle curves, and that creates a visual kind of effect that will reflect the changing light throughout the day. Oh, so shiny. It must be very important indeed. The tower contains a luxury hotel. I know, who would have imagined that? as well as high-end residences and premium office space. There's a vent going on right there. But... So it's super diverse, I'm sure. 
It also has an observation deck as well. Number 11. China Zun. Next up we have China Zun, or the Satik Tower, which is a massive great big skyscraper that dominates the skyline of Beijing, China. Since 2018, it's been the tallest building in the city and one of the most prominent landmarks. It stands at 1,732 feet tall and is a symbol of Beijing's rapid urbanization and growing significance on the global stage. And can you guess who designed it? Go ahead, give it a shot. That's right, it was Cone Peterson Fox Associates. So the whole of Asia can have all of that glorious homogenized look just like the United States. Yay for modernization! It is the absolute greatest! Oh, and you also know for sure that they're all up in the environmental chat about this building as well and simply won't stop banging on about its boring rainwater collection system and eco-friendly nonsense. Huzzah for progress! China Zun has a design that they say pays homage to Chinese culture and tradition. Its distinctive shape is reminiscent of a traditional Chinese wine vessel, which is a nod to the nation's history. And also, it has all the usual variety of functions, with office spaces, luxury residences, and a five-star hotel. And of course, it has the all-important observation deck. I mean, seriously, how much observing do we all need to do at this point? Number 10. The Taipei 101 Taipei 101 used to be known as the Taipei World Financial Center, and it's a skyscraper that was completed in 2004, which then held the title of the world's tallest building up until about 2010. Designed by C.Y. Lee and Partners, Taipei 101 has a pretty distinct profile with a series of tiered setbacks and a pagoda-like appearance. The building's number, 101, represents the 101 floors that it contains, and it's apparently all about achieving perfection and growth. They also claim that the whole thing is sustainable as all get out, but whatever. The skyscraper houses an extensive shopping mall, office spaces, and various dining and entertainment places, and naturally there's also an observation deck, but at least from this one you can see some mountains. Haha! <laughs> number 9. Shanghai World Financial Center The Shanghai World Financial Center, or less catchily known as the SWFC, is literally a towering symbol of Shanghai's rapid economic development and its emergence as a global financial hub. It's 1,614 feet tall and one of the most iconic landmarks within the city. It was, I shiz you not, designed by Cone Peterson Fox Associates. I swear, I'm not receiving any endorsements from these people. They just designed just about every colossal edifice there is, and they're definitely not compensating for anything trousereal either. Honestly, they're all fine, they say, probably, but back to the SWFC. Apparently, its weird design is characterized by a trapezoidal aperture near its apex, and this has given it the nickname the bottle opener. So it's instantly recognizable on the city skyline and has contributed to its popularity amongst tourists and architectural enthusiasts. It's one of the world's highest observatories and a must-visit destination for those who are seeking to take in Shanghai skyline. Number 8. The International Commerce Center the International Commerce Center is a massive skyscraper. Woohoo! It's located in Hong Kong, measuring 1,588 feet, and it's one of the most prominent landmarks on the city skyline. And yet again, it was designed by Cone Peterson Fox Associates, and yet again, we're basically going to have as about as much to say about it as if we were studying a puddle. It is as much the same as all the other sleek, modern, and boring skyscrapers that we've looked at, containing boring offices, fancy schmancy apartments, a luxury hotel, and a shopping mall. Could it be any more generic? Oh, and of course, we shouldn't forget the all-important observation deck as well. Number 7. The Wuhan Greenland Center The Wuhan Greenland Center is an ambitious skyscraper project situated in Wuhan, China, a city that's undergone rapid urbanization and economic growth, but will pretty much always be most famous for being the ground zero for the event that shall not be named. You know the one. Anyhow, the Wuhan Greenland Center is 1,562 feet tall, but originally it was supposed to be 2,087 feet, 
and therefore some sort of impressive quantity, but it fell foul to airspace regulations and would be forced to have a redesign midway through its construction. Darn those pesky airplanes and their need for space. The tower, like every other boring building, was built to house a mixture of functions, which includes office spaces, high-end residencies, a luxury hotel, observation decks offering visitors breathtaking views, and the Yangtze River. The trouble with the space is that despite some very lofty ideas and elaborate plans, it suffered from a million different setbacks and holdups during construction. By the time it got fully open, it was estimated to have a cost ridiculous to a sum of $4.5 billion to complete, which is definitely worth it, I'm sure. Number 6. Central Park Tower The Central Park Tower in the heart of Manhattan, New York City is an exceptional and iconic skyscraper. Rising to a height of 1,550 feet, it is the tallest residential building in the world and the second tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. Completed in 2020, the tower is a symbol of Manhattan's ever-evolving skyline and its enduring appeal as a global center for culture commerce, and luxury living. With a bunch of upscale residential condominiums, retail spaces, and a seven-story Nordstrom department store at its base. And of course, they've done everything in their power to make sure that this cathedral of consumerism is somehow also, conversely, a state-of-the-art, up-to-the-minute, fully eco-friendly, sustainable wet dream. Or, of course, they added an extra layer of insulation and paid for a few trees to be planted. Who could possibly say? But just look how shiny it is, though. Ooh! Number 5. The Lakta Center This is the 87-story skyscraper located in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's all the modern and shiny stuff that you would anticipate in a contemporary erection. But what with Russia's enjoyment of one-upmanship, it's also the tallest building in all of Europe but actually only the 16th in the world. Big erections not being Russia's most prominent feature, it would seem, despite all of their fondness for posturing and excessive boasting. This building was completed in 2018 and then became the headquarters for the Russian multinational Energy Corporation shortly thereafter, as well as all of the usual additional multi-use junk like offices and even, almost incredibly, public facilities. The complex upon which it stands is also home to a multiple amount of other buildings and it even houses a planetarium. So, to be honest, the building already seems way more interesting than the ones that are just full of fancy apartments and malls. Number 4. Landmark 81 It's probably one of the best value hotels. Landmark 81 is a skyscraper located in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, completed in 2018, and it's the tallest building in both Vietnam and Southeast Asia at 1,513 feet. It was designed by Atkins and has a modern and innovative design with its distinctive glass facade and sleek profile. The building is the centerpiece of the Vin Olm Central Park development in Ho Chi Minh City. It's supposed to be a representation of the city's move towards modern times and its aspirations to be one on the world stage. So, with this in mind, it's been created to provide all of the most bland and generic things that the rest of the global places have to offer. You know, luxury residences, offices, hotels, and shopping malls. Deep joy! It also boasts its very own observation deck on the 79th floor, offering the essential panoramic views of the city and the Saigon River. Because it seems that there's an international fixation on high-up viewing of cities, and nowhere is allowed to build anything new without ensuring that the jonesing visitor can get their viewing fix wherever they happen to land in the world. Number 3. The International Trade and Commerce Center This International Trade and Commerce Center is a skyscraper located in China, and it's a very impressive structure which was completed in 2015, having a sizable 98 stories inside of its 1,503 feet of tallness. Designed by the renowned architectural firm Mashi Safdi & Associates, it features a distinctive design characterized by a cluster of towers of varying heights culminating in a dramatic apex. The design represents the confluence of the two rivers nearby, highlighting the city's geographical significance. It's said to have been inspired by sailing ships that were once commonplace in the waters that surround the area. 
Although the building is not quite complete, it's due for completion in 2023 and 24. It's planned to have offices, residential, retail, and entertainment spaces, like all of the other buildings for this entire list. And they plan to bring all of the loads of people and their money into this area of the city. Number 2. The Exchange 106 as the 19th tallest building in the world, the Exchange 106, or the Signature Tower, is hardly the biggest one that we've seen, but it's actually the second tallest in all of Malaysia and the third tallest of all the buildings in the world in Southeast Asia, so you know they're kind of proud of it. Because big buildings are impressive and make stuff seem important. Located in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and a prominent landmark in the city's ever-evolving skyline, this structure was designed by architectural firm Mulia Group. The tower is part of a development that is an important part of the plans to shape the city's future as a prominent financial district. This multifunctional skyscraper houses a mixture of office space, luxury residence, a hotel, high-end retail, and more, and it's designed to provide a hub for businesses, residents, and visitors, making it a central element to the city's vibrant urban landscape. And it would seem, making it as much like anywhere else in the world as possible. Matchy-matchy is the fashion these days. Number 1. Patronus Towers if you ever see a scene from a movie that wants to show that it's Kuala Lumpur, then these are the buildings that you'll see on the screen. The Patronus Towers, located in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, are not only iconic skyscrapers, but also a symbol of the nation's economic progress and modernization. Completed all the way back in 1998, they held the title of the world's tallest buildings until 2004 and remain amongst the most recognized and admired structures in the world. Designed by Argentine architect Cesar Pelli, the Patronus Towers have a postmodern design that merges Islamic and contemporary aesthetics. These twin towers are 1,483 feet tall, connected by a sky bridge between the 41st and 42nd floors, creating a unique and memorable architectural feature. The towers mostly serve as headquarters for the national oil company Patronus, but they also have office spaces, retail areas, a concert hall, the Philharmonic Hall inside, and the observation deck on the 86th floor has panoramic views that the view-addicted visitor should absolutely desire. So that's a massive relief then, to be honest. Well, that's all from the tallest buildings for today, and I'm super dizzy from all of those impossibly high observation decks, aren't you? Tell me, which one of these awesomely tall but also oddly similar erections gives you all the best feels? Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.